All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. So we came to talk about who? Tom and Erica Girardi really quickly. I'm just prepping um, my two channels. Hold on. Hold on. That's Erica Jane by herself. Thank goodness she had that fake name, Erica Jane, right? Or else this could have been really bad for her brand. Um, if that if that Girardi would have dropped off of there, it would have been like, well, who else are you? You know, now you're just Erica. Like, who's Erica? So um, it was a really good thing that she had the Girardi in for her brand. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you, this is a T-Hive movie night video. And so, therefore, I will only be on Tox Talks and uh, Toxic Diamond Productions LLC for a short time while I go over this, okay? And then after that, I will be on T.I. Movie Night. So here's what we're about to do. We're about to watch Erica and Tom's documentary on Discord. I'm going to be providing the link over on T.I. Movie Night. And I'm going to go down a timeline. First of all, there are legal troubles that had swirled around Erica Jane and Tom Girardi over the last five months. And I believe that this is really what pushed them um, to this point of no return. Now she can say it's cheating allegations. It seems very financial. Tom just won a $1.2 million PPP loan. And he actually gave Erica Jane some of it, which people have questions about because there are claims in a lawsuit that Erica and Tom Girardi's divorce is just a sham in order to hide money that they embezzled from plane crash victims' family. Apparently, Tom Girardi had represented these victims' families and had been skimming money from them. And so, therefore, um, because Erica Jane doesn't want to get caught up in Tom possibly going to prison, okay, um, it's this is a rumor. It's the rumor that they're divorcing because of that reason, okay? Erica Jane filed for a divorce from Tom Girardi in November after they had been married for 21 years. Um, and she had, she had done that on November 3rd, citing irreconcilable differences. Okay. She said this step, this is not a step taken lightly or easily. Jane told us weekly, I have great love and respect for Tom and for our years and the lives that we built together. Now, they were married for 21 years. I don't know how she stayed with that for 21 years, but money will make you do that. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, she clearly is a sugar baby, and he clearly was her sugar daddy. And, you know, just recently, Tom, let me see if I can pull this picture up for you guys. Just recently, Tom was seen out with a whole nother woman. Hold on. Let me see. Tom Girardi out on date. Let me just go here because this just happened. Oh, I hate to be in Yahoo. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the PPP loan stuff. Tom Girardi was approved for the $1.2 million PPP loan. That's, that's, a, that's a lot. That's a lot. And I really hope that he's careful with that money because he's already on his way uh, up out of there. Okay, so what was it? it? Was Bravo and Cocktails that had posted this? Hold on. Oh boy, and my 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 computer's doing some choppy stuff. Let me let this page finish loading. And you know what? I'm gonna get you guys to the page while it finishes loading because it's being choppy. I see my VIP T Hive in the house. If you guys can go over, go over to T Hive Movie Night VIP T. If you're not on that channel, we're about to drop down from these ones from these other two channels. Okay, and it's still buffering, which is very annoying, very annoying. Okay. All right. So Tom Girardi spotted out on a date with a mystery woman. Moving on, question mark. Tom Girardi was recently spotted out with a mystery woman. According to Dumoy, the estranged husband of Erica Jane was on a date at Stun Pony Steakhouse and a local watering hole in Pasadena. The hot spot is located down the street from his Pasadena house. He's allowed to live in until it sells. And here he is. Um, 
here's here's Dumoy. She posted it. She posted a picture of herself with Tom Girardi. Tom Girardi on a date at Stony Point Steakhouse and local watering hole in Pasadena down the street from blah, blah, blah. Anon, please. Anonymous, please. Um, let's see. The woman was later identified as Tom's longtime travel agent. Multiple people are telling me that this is Tom's longtime travel agent. Some saying they might have been more than acquaintances. Maybe she's talking, taking him out to a nice lunch for old time's sake. Or maybe they're talking about their their home, uh, his home and what he can do and where he can go. Fast forward to the next day, Bravo and Cocktails received some more scoop about Tom and his relationship with a travel agent. My friend used to work at Tom's firm and Tom and his travel agent have been sleeping together for years. Well known at the form, at the firm. Ooh, ooh, I just cannot. Oh my. And I do mean, oh me, oh my. I was giving this man the benefit of the doubt, okay? Um, so that has been well known at the firm, which is embarrassing for Erica Jane. I mean, I can tell he wasn't being faithful. They didn't, they didn't seem emotional. And I don't think Erica Jane was faithful to him either. I think she'd been getting her kicks and giggles somewhere else, if you know what I'm saying. It's got to be some sexy, buff, white hunk of a cop that come break her off every now and then. I'm just saying, some type of lawyer, police officer, some. Anyway, Tom Girardi was on a romantic date with his real estate agent. So who's looking into his offshore accounts? asking for a friend. Ooh. Ooh, it was a romantic date. My friend, it looked like that old dude on a date and it looked like that's Tom Girardi. Lord help keep me near the cross. I cannot with these Hollywood people. Like I, I just cannot. The man, listen, you're not divorced yet. You shouldn't be on dates. That's the way I feel. I don't know how you guys feel about that. But how do you guys feel about that? I really feel like if you're not divorced yet, you shouldn't be on dates because what if you decide to get back with the person that you married to, like Shamari and Ron DeVoe? You know what I mean? That happened, okay? And so you just don't want to just continue. All right. All right. You don't want to just continue to date around and, you know, you might bring something back to the house. That's all I'm saying. All right, we're about to drop off of Toxic Diamond Productions. Guys, please join me on T-Hive Movie Night. See you there. Um, we are about to drop down from Tox Talks. And now we are simply on T-Hive Movie Night. All right, let's go on over. Let me take a look. I'm going on over. All right, let's see. Let me see. Give me one second, guys. Oh, so it completely deleted it off YouTube. I didn't know it was going to do that. Hold on. All right, I see you. Okay. All right. So I am still on T Hive Movie Night, which is a good thing. Um, but then it's just it's just me and one other person. So that's fine. Let's go over this video really quickly so that we can get this T out so that we can get this documentary started. Hold on. Let me go ahead and share. I did not expect it to delete that off of my full YouTube. That was crazy. I thought it was just going to drop down off of there. One second, T-Hive Movie Nighters. I want to make sure I share this video with the right people. Well, you never can tell on the internet, right? Who's right and who's wrong. Let's see here. Okay, let's get into it. So, December 2nd, 2020, there was a class action lawsuit firm, uh, Edelson PC, who filed a lawsuit alleging that Erica Jane and Tom Girardi's divorce is but a, a sham, um, is what they said, okay? The lawsuit, which is viewed by Insider, claimed that Girardi was embezzling money from the widows and orphans 
of victims of the 2018 Lion Air Flight 610 crash. In October 2018, the new Boeing 737 MAX plane crashed into the Java Sea 13 minutes after taking off from the Sankaro Hada International Airport in Jakarta, Indonesia, killing 189 passengers and crew on board. Girardi's law firm, Girardi Keese, represented nearly a dozen of those families of the multiple victims of the crash in their subsequent litigation against Boeing, which is the air, airline company. In its lawsuit, Edelson PC claimed that Boeing transferred substantial but confidential settlement amounts to Girardi Keese for the victim's family, for the victim's family, once a settlement was reached early in 2000. Hold on. What, what? Hold on one second, you guys. I thought I was looking at something different than what I am looking at. Hold on one second. I should be... Okay. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Am I not live? I'm confused. Am I not live or am I live, you guys? A shame and a scandal, right? What? Why is my channel not coming up? Now that's crazy. Yeah, I am live. But you know what? They're making it hard for me to, um, what they're doing is they're showing that I don't have any viewers on here for some reason. And they're making it hard for me to, um, to find my channel all of a sudden, which is awkward. Let me make you a mod, Eminem, because that's your role. Slow your roll. Okay, hold on. This thing is just doing its own thing. That's really, mm -mm. YouTube is sad the way they do um, certain content creators. It's really sad. It really is. Okay. All right. It says live on your end. Yeah, it's showing me that I don't have anybody. It's saying there's nobody watching me. And it's saying that I'm not live on my end. But if we're live, let's keep pushing. Okay. In the lawsuit, Edelson PC claims that Boeing transferred substantial but confidential settlement amounts to Girardi for these victims' families once the settlement was reached in 2020. But the funds were never given to the victims' families. They said that instead, Girardi kept the money for his own purposes and doled it out to his friends and family, including Erica Jane, and that they're now using the divorce to hide the funds. Now, one thing about Erica Jane is that you guys know that she had that $40,000 a month um, glam squad, you know, $40,000 a month um, for a glam squad is, is just like, damn, how ugly could you be? you know, to make, to feel like you need to have that much um, of a glam squad. Let me see. Erica Girardi, no glam squad picks. So yeah, she must feel like she needs to do over and above, over and, uh, you know, um, have an abundance of, of makeup on and go overboard because for what reason? I mean, she's a, an attractive woman. I didn't see that necessary. Uh, I could see how she would look at herself as ugly without all that stuff. Um, just if you look at certain pictures, but my God, it was, that was just insane to me. $40,000 a month for a glam squad. Anyway, at the heart of this deception, this defendant Girardi and his need to fund outrageous lifestyles for him and his soon to be ex-wife, Erica Jane, to keep up their celebrity status, Tom and Erica must project a public image of obscene wealth at all times and at whatever cost. This is according to the lawsuit. Neither Girardi nor Jane responded to this insider's previous request for comments regarding 
this uh, lawsuit. December 9th of 2020. Now we back in December, okay? December 9th, 2020. Air, uh, Girardi requests termination of spousal support. So in November 2020, she had requested that he provide spousal support in their divorce and pay her legal fees. The following month, Tom Girardi asked the court to terminate Erica Jane's right to spousal support and requested that she pay her own attorney fees, according to documents obtained by Page Six. In December 14th, on December 14th, 2020, Girardi is held in civil contempt after declining to explain why he couldn't pay two million to four of his clients in the Boeing case. So not only see and see that makes it real for me that makes it realer for me the fact that they might be divorcing because of money because he was supposed to pay two to four million dollars to only two clients and he could not do that oh okay and he could not do that um and i, I I'm, I'm trying to figure out why tom girardi you have all this money you've stolen all this money from these people where are these people's money? Okay. U.S. District Judge Thomas Durkin asked Tom Girardi to explain what happened to the money. But his lawyer told the judge that he, quote, advised him to, to decline to answer that and said that Tom Girardi would not be able to pay the $2 million figure. Quote, these are widows and orphans. Half a million dollars for any one of these families is a significant amount of money, life changing, given the tragedy that they went through. The judge subsequently found Girardi in civil contempt, which is, quote, used to coerce a party to perform an action in compliance with the court, according to Cornell Law School's Legal Information Institute. Durkin also froze Girardi and his firm's assets. So at this moment, Tom and Erica Jane are broke and don't have um access to their own money. Okay. According to the same report, Girardi only spoke once during the Chicago hearing, which he attended on the telephone so that the judge could just hear his voice on the eighth. I'm sorry. So we just went from the ninth. So now on December 18th, nine days later, a story comes out claiming that Erica or that claiming that, uh, Tom Girardi had been cheating on Erica for years during their message, uh, their marriage. A source told People reporters Ashley Butcher and Melody Chu that the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star filed for a divorce from Tom Girardi because he was cheating with multiple women. The source said that she had known about the infidelity for years, but she reached her breaking point. Quote, when she was performing her last week on Broadway, now y'all remember on the show, she was definitely performing on Broadway um, and she was doing Roxy Hart. Okay. Um, when she, during that last week of her doing Roxy Hart, remember that was during COVID, COVID kind of shut her down. He left her high and dry and he was frolicking around town instead of supporting her and intending her shows. She realized that she will never be a priority to Tom Girardi. And I said that I could see that in their banter and the way that they talk to each other. And, you know, she's always so grabbing his face and kissing him. And she's she was trying, but Tom just seemed so stiff. He did not seem like he was into her at all. I know he wasn't giving her no swipe. That's all I'm saying. Jane was performing in Chicago on a Broadway in, on Broadway in the role of Roxy Hart. Her stint was cut short after theaters closed in New York due to the virus. The source told people that Erica Jane and Girardi's split was a long time coming. Now, this is a month later. This is a month and two days later in 2021, January 20th, 2021. Tom Girardi's brother, Robert, asked to be named his conservator claiming that Tom Girardi cannot care for himself without assistance. He said, quote, his short-term memory is severely compromised and on information and belief, he is often not oriented as date, time, or place. Left to his own devices, it's highly doubtful that Tom could manage most of the activities of daily living for any significant period of time without assistance. Now, my whole thing is this. 
how do you or how do you represent so many clients millions and millions of dollars this man was able to get millions and millions of dollars from so many people yet all of a sudden when he loses his assets he needs a conservator to control his money which happens to be his brother right tom okay People reported that Tom Girardi had a mental assessment on February 26th as part of his brother's petition to become his permanent conservator. And a psychiatrist diagnosed him with dementia and late onset Alzheimer's disease in a sworn declaration submitted to the court. Quote, dementia impairs his ability to understand the hearing. Long Beach forensic and clinical psychiatrist Dr. Nathan Lavitt wrote, according to the People Report, his emotional distress is directly related to the dementia and exacerbated by his confusion. Oh, that is too much. Okay. On January 22nd, 2021, Erica Jane then moves out of the Pasadena mansion that she shared with Girardi and she downsizes into a $1.5 million home. Well, I don't know how much of a downsize that is, but she's got another thing coming because you're not going to be living like that on your um on your 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 real housewives of beverly hills salary and you don't have a mauricio okay and you don't have um a a a flighting career before this this real housewives thing like you are only the pop star you are because of the real housewives of beverly hills honestly i'm glad she got to live out her dreams i really am according to court documents obtained by the blast and people magazine Erica Jane no longer lives at the couple's $15 million Pasadena mansion. Dirt reported on May 5th that the home had been listed for sale with an asking price of just $13 million. The Palacio party, uh, the Palacio property, which has been seen several times on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, is over 10,000 square feet and boasts four bedrooms and six bathrooms. I don't know what place has more bathrooms than bedrooms, but that's weird to me. Honestly, I'm being honest. Just weird, straight weird. Um, in contrast, Erica Jane's reported current home, which she appears to be renting, is 2,015 square feet and has three bathrooms and two bedrooms, according to a realtor. So she's renting this $1.5 million home. It's just a three bedroom. And I think this is a more modest move for her. I think sometimes people in this position, they start getting ahead of themselves. You know, money becomes an issue because they start getting ahead of themselves. And sometimes you just need to be bought back to reality. Erica has been living in the rental house for a while. She made it her own space and she loves it. According to a source, she's doing well in it and is happy. In March of 2021, Erica Jane is reportedly named in at least Five lawsuits against Tom Girardi. Oh, oh my. Oh my. Five lawsuits. Oh my goodness. That is really a lot, you guys. Insider Stephanie Clifford reported in March that Erica Jane had been listed in at least five lawsuits against Girardi. Erica Jane has been listed as a co-debtor for personal payments to American Express and the Bel Air Country Club and as co-owning money to Girardi Keys clients who have yet to receive their settlements from several cases. Oh, my goodness. I mean, he's just, they're just not giving these people their money. They're just literally taking, do, they're running cases and taking people's money and just not paying them at all. I mean, who does that? You could at least give them a fifth or tell them you're going to give them a third at a time. You're just not giving them people nothing of their own money. Meanwhile, um, Edelson's PC is also seeking Erica Jane's deposition on Girardi's mental state. So they want to know what she feels about it, which I don't understand why they want to know that because I don't expect for her to be truthful about anything. Sorry, just had to take a real quick sip. Meanwhile, California rendered Girardi's law license inactive. So now Tom Girardi is no longer an active uh, lawyer in, in California where his license was originated. 
and the state bar's investigation is still ongoing. California was seeking $5.4 million in unpaid taxes from this couple as well, according to the Clifford Report. And they want his Aston Martin, his Mercedes, and his Land Rover as well in these bankruptcy proceedings. Also, as of Clifford's March report, Tom Girardi owes $11,000 to a orchard florist, $134,000 to a car leasing company, Lamborghini Financial, and $7,000 to high-end laundromats. What? I mean, you needed to get your clothes washed for $7,000? What? what? I, I'm trying to understand it. As of the March report, Tom Girardi is living on $3,000 a month in his social security benefits. Wow, that is such a major decline. That is so different than the life he was just living. This man was just a millionaire. Now this man is living on $3,000. He makes less money than I do, okay, at this point, Tom Girardi. Is that not crazy and sad and crazy, okay? On April 12th, now we're in April of 2021, guys. April 12th, 2021. There was a trailer that revealed that Erica Jane's divorce and legal issues would be included in the new season, which I made a video about. In the trailer for the show's new season, Erica Jane is seen telling her fellow castmates that she, that she thought she was, quote, going to hold that man's hand until he died, seemingly referring to Tom Girardi. She also appeared to insist that she didn't know anything about the lawsuits before filing for a divorce. Dorit said, orphans and widows, it makes you feel sick. And she said that during a dinner party referencing the lawsuit. Um, and, and you know, what's sad is that it, it does make you feel sick. You know, um, this is this is people's, people have passed away. This, this is their wives that don't have anything um, and their children, you know, and so, yeah, and that could be true, Stacy. Stacy J says he has money somewhere, trust. I think it's through his travel agent and through his brother, for sure. But they've been significantly downsized. And if they do have money, they can't put on the image of having the money, which was the point of them doing this in the first place. They wanted to have that image. Orphans and widows, it makes you feel sick. Did you know any of this, Kyle? Um, Kyle asked Erica, did you know any of this? Kyle asked Erica Jane. No one knows the answer but him, Erica says. Now, season 11 started filming in October 2020, but they stopped the production due to COVID-19 concerns in late November and then started back up. May 18th, 2021. So what are we in June? Okay, so now we're going back last month. A sneak peek clip for The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season 11 was released in which Erica Jane refers to her problems or references her problems and talks about being prescribed Laxapro. So now she's trying to get into, oh, I have mental issues now and I'm depressed and this, that, and the other, right? In the clip, which is which appeared to have been filmed before Erica Jane and Girardi split and legal troubles were made public, Jane spoke about how the stresses of the pandemic on Broadway and Chicago getting short led to her seeking psychiatric help. She said, like all of us, I'm busy all the time. And uh, <laughs> let me stop trying to do her voice. I always do that, you guys. I'm sorry. Like all of us, I'm busy all the time. And when I came home from New York, it was really silent. And then when I didn't have anything to do, I was walking the halls of the house and I couldn't sleep. I couldn't shake it. I just couldn't shake it. I was feeling this incredible dread. Erica Jane told the housewives. Now, obviously, we know that that dread is due to the fact that she was listed in five uh, lawsuits for serious amounts of money, and she knew that her life was about to change. She said, every day I woke up and dreaded waking up, so she called a psychiatrist who went on to prescribe her Lexapro. She said, and it was the greatest thing. I did not want to see a psychiatrist. I felt that it was a sign of defeat. In a confessional shown as part of the clip, Erica Jane also spoke about how these women don't know her life or anything about her personal life. So I felt like at that point where she said, like, these women don't know anything about me, you're lashing out at the women because you're going through something that is legal because you're doing illegal things in order to keep up an image for who? 
I mean, honestly, I understand the pressures of being a Caucasian woman in a rich society, but that is ridiculous. It's okay to just be a millionaire. It don't have to be multi-million. I'm just saying, okay? Everyone has problems, everyone. And the bigger your life is, the bigger your problems are, she said in her confessional. Now, here we go. We're getting to the documentary, June 14th, 2021, The Housewife and the Hustler. An ABC documentary about Erica Jane and Girardi's legal problems premiered on Hulu. The documentary features interviews with legal experts and former housewife stars and a number of the law firm's former clients. Bias Ramadan, whose mother passed away in that Lion Air crash, also spoke against Girardi and Erica Jane in the documentary. He said, we are the victims here, not him, not Tom, and not his wife. It's only me and my three siblings, Rod Madan said. We just want to know, can we get our money and when will we get it? Okay. Um, the explosive documentary featured court documents claiming that Girardi gave Erica Jane's company $20 million in loans from his law firm. Mm. So it seems that moreover of them having a real marriage because there was a friend that spoke out about this situation with Erica Jane and Tom who said that their marriage had always been strange. It always was awkward to them. Um, but moreover, clearly they were business partners in this huge scam um, and they were keeping each other up by using each other to bounce funds off of, which is, you know, that, that makes sense that she's, you know, she has this wonderful lavish life that he's funding because he's using her name to do a lot of these different things as well as bounce funds off of his law firm. So if he wants to say, Hey, you know, I, I loaned this, this business $20 million and I can write it off in a tax write off. Cool. You know, um, and then I don't have to be responsible for also having that $20 million. But on top of that, this man was not paying taxes and not paying his debts and his bills to, to vendors as well. Court papers featured in The Housewife and The Hustler state that Tom Girardi transferred $20 million from Girardi Keys to Jane's company, EJ Global. Insider has not been able to independently view the court filings. The documentary also features a never aired deposition video in which Girardi acknowledges he is broke. At one point, I had about 80 million or 50 million in cash. That's all gone, he says in a clip. I also had a stock portfolio of about 50 million. That's all gone. The documentary also revealed that Erica Jane was subpoenaed twice to give her depositions on her and Girardi's assets before she filed for a divorce. So when she says to Kyle Richards that she didn't know anything about this before she filed for a divorce, that's a lie. She had been subpoenaed twice before she filed for that divorce. Court documents from the lawsuit that were highlighted in the ABC News special revealed that Erica Jane was subpoenaed on May 28th and September 28th of last year. That was that was um, before we started in December, which is when she filed it. The hearings were postponed for undisclosed reasons. And Erica Jane, who's 49 years old, who Erica, you look so young. Um, she never set for questioning. She just went on to file in November. So like I said, I said October just a second ago. Um, but and she was subpoenaed in May. She was subpoenaed in September. And then suddenly she's like, OK, I'm done. I can't do this in November. It seems that after September, she started getting depressed. She started realizing her life was going to change. She needed to get on some type of medications. I wouldn't be surprised um, if she relapses on drugs at this point, because coming from such a high into such a low, um, I could just imagine how that would make you feel on June 15th. Okay. This is just a cut. This is 15 days ago. Okay. On June 15th, Erica Jane is dropped by her attorneys the day after the, the documentary is released. Okay. The law firm Dinsmore and soul filed to withdraw as her counsel in Girardi's ongoing bankruptcy case. The day after the house and the hus the housewife and the, um, um, hustler premiered on Hulu. Peter Motston, a partner at Dinsmore and Soul in L.A., said the relationship of trust and confidence between Erica Jane has broken down. Why? Because Erica Jane was sitting in there lying. OK, period. Lying to her own lawyers. 
There has been a fundamental and materialist uh, material breakdown in the relationship between the firm and Ms. Girardi. In my good faith and judgment, the attorney-client relationship has been irreparably damaged, and it is no longer possible to carry on with the necessary degree of trust and confidence, which is foundational to that relationship, says the attorney. Um, and they that that was the extent of what it was that um, the uh, that the firm said. Now, recently, she has been. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh my gosh, there's rumors that she's going to. I'm sorry, I'm 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 reading things. There's rumors that she's going to testify against Tom in order to um, save her own butt. And um, and that's going to be really hard because Tom has been funding her lifestyle for so long um, that that is just it's 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 almost it's, it's a serious slap in the face. I almost can't put it in words what she has to do to save her own butt. But she has to. But this man has been supporting her life for 21 years, literally has been funding her entire existence. She hasn't had to do anything. She, she, I mean, her and Kyle Richard are probably the only actual real two housewives. Now, recently, and this just happened June 29th yesterday, Erica Girardi's accountant, lawyer, and landlord were ordered by the court to turn over her financial records. She was previously accused of refusing to provide access to her finances for a bankruptcy trustee investigating her husband's assets. OK, here's what People magazine is saying. Erica Girardi's accountant, divorce, divorce lawyer and landlord have all been ordered by a judge to produce her financial records in court as a bankruptcy trustee continues to investigate Tom Girardi's assets. So, you know, you're saying like, oh, he has money somewhere. Trust. That's what Stacy said. Right. Well, they're they're investigating into that. They want to know where it is, when it is, how much it is, where it came from and where it's about to go. OK, so whatever he has, whether it's through his brother. And I don't think that they're going to give his brother conservatorship. I don't think they're going to give him time to pull his stuff together before he ends up in jail or having to really pay out a lot of money to these people. They're going to, they're going to freeze those assets and that money is going to be for those people. Um, so anyway, Tom and his law firm, Girardi Keese, have been accused of embezzling funds from several families who lost loved ones in 2018 in that plane crash. And he was later sued by his own business partners, resulting in a chapter seven bankruptcy petition in December, one month after Erica filed for a divorce. Last week, the petitioning creditors in the bankruptcy case filed three se separate motions that accused Erica of refusing to turn over bank statements and other documents to the bankruptcy trustee, according to copies of the motions obtained by people. The trustee's special litigation counsel attorney, Ronald Richards, previously reported that Girardi Keys transferred $20 million to Erica's business including one that the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star created after the news of the embezzlement broke. So you can see right there how they, they tried to snake a move. Um, she, you know, she goes and she creates another company after this embezzling thing comes out. And then the next thing you know, Tom transfers $20 million into this new company. I mean, come on, guys. You, how, I mean, have you never watched a white collar crime movie? Like you're not going to make it. Okay. On Monday, the court ruled in favor of the creditors ordering that Erica's accountant, Michael Ullman, the divorce lawyer, divorce lawyer, Larry Ginsburg and the landlord, Benjamin Cackshore turn over various key documents, including her pay stubs, bank statements, and emails and text messages pertaining to her finances. Ginsburg, Cackshore and Ullman, along with the accountant firm Omen Accountancy Corp, must produce the requested documents later this month and are all set to appear in court for examination on various days during the week of July 19th, according to records. Lawyers for Erica did not want to respond. The original motion claimed that Erica refused to provide access 
to Oldman, her management company, and the books and records of her various companies. It read, as each day goes by, Erica has been publicly dissipating community assets by selling her clothes on public websites, flaunting large jewels on social media and television, and has done nothing to assist in return structure firm payments being made to her instead of the firm by the California lottery, notwithstanding she was contacted through counsel over 12 days ago. Okay, so basically what they're saying is she continues to flaunt her assets. We know she has them. They're on social media. They're on TV. She's selling them, but she won't let us see. The motion went on to claim that Erica used her companies, including the new created Pretty Mess Incorporated to hide assets and has blocked access to Omen while continuing to show off public displays of wealth. And that's really what this is about for them, guys. This is what this is about for Erica Girardi and Tom Girardi was how do I look in public? And so she continues to show off her assets publicly while claiming that she does not have any in court. At every turn, Erica has used the glam to continue to aid and abet the sham transactions that have been occurring with respect to large transfers of assets from the Girardi Keys to Erica. Moreover, the trustee has received zero cooperation from Erica, which is constant with someone hiding assets. Now that now that's weird that they would say that actually, um, that she's using that $40,000 a month glam squad to embezzle money to act like she's paying for a glam squad and that's not what they were getting paid. Um, she was actually embezzling money through that company. That's now that's something, right? Citing a worry that Erica will spend the funds transferred from the debt tour, Girardi Keys, the motion said various recent events, including Erica's attorneys filing to stop representing her and then later withdrawing that filing, have heightened the necessity to trace her money and investigate the receipt of funds, her purchases, including the bling and the glam, diamonds and the expenditures of beauty and maintenance. Two days later, Erica's legal team responded to the motion in their own court filing, ass asserting that she has been and remains willing to cooperate fully with the trustee investigation in this bankruptcy case. In addition to responding to the claims that she has not been cooperative, she requested that the court reconsider its decision to appoint Richards as the special counsel to the trustee in the bankruptcy case, accusing him of making false and inflammatory statements about her on social media. She said that Richards has engaged in vicious, conclusory, and speculatively, uh, speculative public vilification, all without any evidence, which, even if it existed, should and must be present to adjudicate, to and adjudicated by this court. I, I actually agree with that part. I actually agree with. I don't think that court officials should be on social media speaking on any clients, anyone in court. That is court business and court is a formal proceeding and it should stay that way. I think that if you get off of the the, the court chair and you go on to um, social media and you decide to start giving opinions about the clients and this and that, then I think you you in some way you've lost some ethic and integrity. And I think that he shouldn't be appointed trustee. I agree with that. Um, let's see. In a statement shared with people, Richards called the motion a Hollywood attempt to create a smoke screen to slow down their work. Um, and then he brought up freedom of speech. He said his social media posts were protected by freedom of speech. I don't think so. I think if you're going to be controlling somebody's money, you need to be controlling your freedom of with your speech. And there is a such thing as ethics. Had there been any restrictions by the court on free speech, they would have been adhered to, as all court orders are by our office. His statement said, adding that the court previously rejected a gag order requested from Erica. So she tried to pretty much shut everybody up, and the court denied that, which obviously they're not on your side. They want it to be public, Erica, um, and and I don't I don't know if it's going to work for her. He said, we are representing the trustee on a limited basis related to Erica Jane. We only need to zealously pursue our client's litigation objectives, which is to find the money and recover it. Attacking the trustee choice of counsel who is doing an effective job and working hard is, is a poorly designed strategy. 
The real issue is the large receivables to Erica Jane and the money that she's refusing to return to people, period. The bankruptcy case is one of many legal woes facing Erica and Tom. That's just one, okay? There are several different lawsuits. And then all of a sudden, Tom is trying to say he has Alzheimer's. His younger brother, Robert. Oh, he, oh. Okay, so his younger brother, Robert, was named the conservator over his person and his estate at this moment. So the brother did win that conservatorship. Um... So, yeah, and they're just being accused of using their divorce to protect their money at this point. And um, Tom is not responding to any of this, but Erica Jane has been on social media. Let me see if I can take you guys over here before I drop this link so that we can watch the program on Discord. Let's see. Uh, let me go into... Um, let me type in housewives. It should pop down. Let's see what pops down. Okay. Maybe not this one. I might have to go find it. Um, or maybe this one. Hold on. There were not many people who had Erica Jane's back, but who did have her back was Candace Dillard. Do you feel for Erica? I want to know that. Do you guys feel bad for Erica at this point? What are we looking at when we see Erica now? Are we still seeing the um are we still seeing the beautiful you know lady that is entertaining us with her uh you know with all of her glam antics and this that and the other i mean what are you guys seeing when you look at her that's that's what i want to know nowadays all right let me go ahead and get discord up and let me pull up as well the video doing that now i see eminem already on our discord hi am all right and let me get over to my videos. Okay, and it's called The Housewife and the Hustler. Here it is here. All right, got that all pulled up. Hold on, don't start playing yet. Let me just go ahead and... Hello, Discord. Am I on a movie call? No, wait, how do I do this? Uh, I every I always get okay. There we go. Hello, Discord. Let me go ahead and share my screen with the Discord. All right, you guys, we are in Discord and my screen is shared. Let me get you a link. Let me invite some people. All right. Okay. Got some folks invited. Let me go ahead and drop a link on you all. And there you go. We are headed over into my Discord to watch this documentary. And I will be back with my review. I'll see you guys there. Peace and love.